KD. Andy, what's up? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm running a couple minutes late here. It's okay. No worries. How's life, girl? How's life? Oh my gosh. Wel welcome to my my den. Welcome to my home office. <laughs> No, we're in the midst of building my office out. We're, I'm moving my offices, so we're doing this like re, big remodel. And I'm doing like the office where I can do podcasts and all that from. So in the meantime, I'm at the home office. <laughs> yeah, I, you got a good setup there too. You sound good and you, you're yeah, definitely oh, like, no. you're, you're the one who's, who needs to give me some tips on podcasting. This is like maybe my 10th or 11th podcast. Um, so first, you know, kind of the obvious question is, I, I want to hear about what the past year has been for, like for you and for the team at Fitness Quest 10. Um, mm. What has or has not changed because of pandemic? Um, how is your team? How is the business? Um, lay it on me. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because almost as we record this almost a year ago, it was March 18th when, when to me, uh, the world changed and, and we furloughed 42 teammates at Fitness Quest 10. And um, looking back, it's interesting because I was in such fight or flight mode that uh, I was immediately thinking, what can I do for the industry, for my team, for our community here in San Diego, that I was already creating a product like within two days of all this happening because I told my team we'd be out two to three weeks. And that's what I mm -hmm. said, well, we'll be out two to three weeks. And then we'll get going again and uh, back to normal. Obviously, that was not the case. Um, and when I reflect upon the last year, man, I get emotional because the energy that went out during the last year has been unlike anything else ever before because I was so mission-driven. And this was, my, this was my mission. Save the world, save the gym. Save the gym, save the world. Save the world, save the gym. That's all I, I, every day, seven days a week, I didn't turn off. And then I, that's not necessarily a good thing, by the way, uh, because for many months, it was like, say Fitness Quest 10, I feel responsible for 42 people's lives that, and put food on the table and for our industry as, as a leader in the industry um, and the people I coach in my mastermind, I felt responsible that I had to have solutions for everybody. and. Um, when you're in that role, it's seven days a week and nonstop. I wasn't sleeping real well uh, because my mind was always racing about what can I do. And um, it's interesting because I've never probably felt so purpose driven, but I've also never felt so dilapidated of energy. And I come on and I do my lives. I did 90 days straight live every day at 12 noon seven days a week called the good news network because everything was about bad news and and COVID-19 people were watching the news all the time and I'm like this I'm sick and tired of the news people need to hear good news and and um it's interesting because navigating the waters just to fast forward um like everybody else certainly did a lot of soul searching um January 1st 2021 uh, is our 21st year in business and wow. there's a lot of soul searching um, that when I reflect upon my, what I do, it's called an annual roadmap and strategic plan every year. And I spend a lot of time on that over the course of December and January every year, really looking at my life in the last three years prior to the pandemic, there was some stuff stirring inside of me about some shifts and changes that I wanted to make um, as a man and, and, and in my career, what I wanted to do to reach more people. And I started to act on those here in January of this year. And um, I'm really, really excited. I mean, as we record this right now in February 21 is now I'm, we're literally under construction. My original studio, I'm creating a, a big uh, media center, live event center where we could have live events again, where it's real small and intimate. I can do a lot more media, my podcast. Um, and I'm doubling down on the media side. And the non-fit pros that I reach, um, the people I do my impact coaching with, I'm going to be doing even a lot more of that in addition to my coaching. Coaching is my future with how I'm going to be able to impact the fitness industry, the training industry, um, doing more coaching, more events, 
Uh, I know that live events will eventually come around. I feel uh, mentoring is something that, that I really is part of my DNA that I want to do more of. And um, I'm excited. There's a lot of changes going on um, at Fitness Quest 10. Is I always considered it my sanctuary, but I've also changed the structure of Fitness Quest 10. And while I'm still going to train because that's part of the, the things that I love to do, um, I won't be doing as many of the everyday activities um, at Fitness Quest 10. I'll be stepping back from that. I'll be training my athletes and my clients, teaching some classes. I'll still be mentoring and guiding and and, and lending my energy there, but um, I've got some some broader visions as well that I want to impact the world with. Wow, super exciting. So with you stepping back, does that mean more of your teammates will, will step in to take over the, the daily training stuff? So you're maintaining that, that model. You, you personally are just stepping back from it a bit to pursue yep, other things. Not, absolutely. Um, and you know, it's, now we've got close to 30 teammates out of our 42 that we furlough. We've got about 30 now. Um, and our business is, is getting back to about 75% of what it was. Certainly, like most other trainers or fit pros was in that 40 to 50% mark for the better part of nine months. But we've seen a little spike here in the last six weeks uh, getting back to it. But half of our team has been with me for 10 years or longer. And amazing. That's, that's pretty amazing miraculous re when you retention. look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel real blessed. We've got some great people on the team. And one thing I've noticed is I've always been a believer in trying to grow your team. Always. Like it, it, whether someone's a career uh, trainer or fitness professional, or they're just going to kind of dabble in it part time is how can I grow them? Well, uh, right now I'm in the process of bringing a, a partner into Fitness Quest 10. Jeff Bristol has been with me for nine years, started at the front desk, became our busiest trainer. I made him the assistant GM three years ago, two years ago, made him the GM. And now I'm bringing him on in a much greater role as a partner with me because um, I believe that I'm going to be spreading my wings and flying way more outside of Fitness Quest 10, as well as inside Fitness Quest 10. And I need someone um, that can really look at the next decade of Fitness Quest 10 and say, I don't want to maintain, I want to get better. And I truly believe this as a leader in order for Fitness Quest 10 to elevate to another level, it's going to take some new leadership and some new organization. Um, so uh, I'm really excited about some of the changes with our teammates. We've got some growth within about six people inside of Fitness Quest 10 and this new organizational structure that, again, I'm using this time during the pandemic to reorganize so that we can be set for the next decade. Like, what can we do to position our community, our tribe, our people, our brick and mortar and put people in the right places so that we can have sustained greatness? You know, uh, Jim Collins built to last Um I want to go beyond just Todd Durkin was here for 21 years or whatever. Even when I step further back from the business side, I always want to train people. I love training people. When I'm training my clients, I, I don't have a care in the world. Honestly, there's nothing else. Even during the pandemic, when I was training people, literally my home gym, I'd be training a few of my athletes. As long as I'm training people, my heart is, is so on fire and my soul feels just like it's full. I always want to do that. And um, I just know future forward for the next decade, I've got to double down on some of the initiatives that I'm working on to really try to make a stake uh, in positively impacting the world. And I can't do both things great. I can't be the kind of leader I need to be at Fitness Quest 10 and really spread my wings uh, in the planet and do what I want to do. So I'm setting everything up around so that I can I can do what I love to do. Well, it sounds like you really made use of the time and got got you know, thought creatively about how to position yourself next, and the fact that you're, you know, bringing bringing some bringing the talent up to to yeah. lead. As or I mean, it's I know I know Jeff and others on your team have been leading already, mm -hmm. but um, to to give them you know a real stake in it, and yeah. um, you know watch watch them what step back and see what they can do. I mean, they've got fresh right. new ideas. They're a, you know, a different generation. They're a little bit younger. So to see what they'll bring to the table is, is going to be fascinating. Yeah. And Cindy, I would say this, cause I know there's a lot of fit pros that are listening in. There's not anyone who's listening in that hasn't really done some, 
soul search in the last nine months. I think everybody, whether it be family and career, business, whatever it is, we've done a lot of soul searching. And one of the things that that I've done is I call it tap into the whispers is I've always asked myself, you know, how can I take my, my gifts that I have and how can I do a better job utilizing them? And I truly believe these moves, although not comfortable for me, like you might hear them and be like, oh, okay, Todd's making some organizational shifts and changes. It sounds really easy. Guys, these are things that I stood and stirred on for not even months, but for years, literally. When I look back for the last three years about where I was going with my career, um, these are things that I hemmed and hawed on. Now, I think COVID-19 certainly brought out, it's time for me now uh, to not wait any longer to make the impact that I really want to make on a more global basis. But um, I want you to know that if you're in soul searching mode, that you got to tap into your whispers and you got to listen to them. And if it's scary, if it's fearful, that's normal. It's normal. But the question I always ask myself is the work I'm doing going to matter in three years or not? If it's going to matter in three years and you're doing the right stuff, but if you're not and you feel like you have more potential in you, then you've got to act on that. And when you say potential, you might be like, oh, yeah, but Todd, you've achieved this or this or this. You know, you don't know what's inside of me. Just like, I don't really know what's inside of you. Like to me, I haven't even hit my full stride yet. So people sometimes from the quote outside say, man, you've achieved this and that. I'm like, I haven't achieved nearly everything that I am going to or want to or need to in order to maximize my potential. So for an outsider, I I don't know what's inside of you. You don't know what's inside of me. The bottom line is we've got to tap into that potential. I, I think it's a worthy point to to say that we often don't even know what's inside of ourselves until right. we do, until we do that Amen. really careful Amen. introspect and introspection and and just di- dig deeper than sur- we're very surfacey with ourselves sometimes and so it it takes some pain painful introspection sometimes to do that. Yeah, well, even pre COVID, think about when were the greatest lessons in one's life probably an injury uh, that you had that was a career ending injury possibly or something that changed the trajectory of your life or you got married or you got divorced or you know you 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 went bankrupt you hit the lot there's usually some monumental events that when you look back that sometimes when you look back you're like wow that was the biggest blessing in my life but when you were going through it it was the biggest storm of your life i want to look back on covid-19 and say wow i made some massive shifts because there was some whispers inside of me that we were saying, trust me, trust me, do as I say. And I was, I, I adhere to that. And that in a year or two, I'll look back and say, wow, Fitness Quest 10 is thriving even more without how the leadership was. And look at the impact, the imprint I've made uh, on a more global basis. So that's, that's what I'm doing. And when you ask about like lessons learned and what I'm doing now, the crazy year in review, it's been one heck of a crazy year. And I wouldn't, I, looking back, I would never have, have projected this way, but um, I'm very grateful too, that we've had the opportunity to reflect, to slow down and think about all the blessings in our life. Yeah. Well, we will look forward to the news coming out of Fitness Quest 10 and, and whatever you're going to unveil, I'm sure it's going to be exciting and, and fun. And I can't wait to hear more about it. So Can you see the smile on my face. <laughs> I do. I see it. I see it. So um, we were scheduled actually to do a podcast last May to mm-hmm. talk about sure. your, your then new book, get your mind, mm. right. Mm. Get your mind, right. Get your mind, right. I devoured it as soon as I got my copy, and I wanted to share some of the highlights with with our listeners. Um, In the book, you cover 10 key focus points um, that people can Mm. use to put themselves in the right mindset. They range from deep thinking, philosophical concepts to self-care fundamentals like eating right and recovery. Um, And I know get your mind right has been a theme that you've lived and taught for many years now. But for those listening and, and who may not be among the ranks of the fire breathing dragons um, who you lead, please summarize what getting your mind right means to you and why you felt it was important to record it in a book. Well, because everyone's heard that the mantra 90% of success happens between the years. And 
with two decades of working with the highest level athletes and entrepreneurs and leaders on the planet, what I've learned is um, getting your mind right is paramount to having high performance. You could be physically in the best shape of your life, which contributes to getting your mind right, by the way. But if your mind ain't right, you could be struggling in, di in different areas. We've got to make sure that the mind is right. The body, the mind, and the soul all work together. So for the last decade, I'd say I've always used that mantra, get your mind right, get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. So not just football players and baseball and MMA athletes, but also folks who are in the boardroom and moms and dads, um, athletes who are going through struggles and, and different challenges and adversities of life. It's like, get your mind right. When I realize it's an everyday thing, it's not a once time thing. It's, it's an everyday thing. You got to get your mind right. So 2018, when I was I a, a partial knee replacement of my knee, I was in my chair recovering and I had this idea like, get your mind right, TD, I, that self-talk. And that's what I say. I, I, still, I call myself TD, get your mind right, TD, get your mind right. That became a book. And literally during this time, 2018, 2019, I wrote the book, Get Your Mind Right with 10 principles on what you have to do to get your mind right. And it involves not just mental, but even from a time, energy, focus standpoint so that it'll help your professional career, which will in turn help your financial um, uh, disposition, position where you're at financially, uh, your family world, what you can do to, to live your best life and how to dream big and how to squash fear, all of the things that can rob us of our best self. Um, so for me, once again, I was in a chair contemplating tapping into the whispers. As a matter of fact, chapter nine is called tapping into the whispers, <laughs> how we all have to do that. And um, I, I really yeah, like I really like how you how you set it up, how you organize things. It's you know, mm. it's it really speaks to the, the way you think as an athlete, um, as a coach, you take the reader through four quarters of a, of a game right. mindset yep. of getting the yep. most out of life by one, having a game plan and kicking it off Two, yep. executing key plays through good habits and mastering your time, energy and focus three, quarter three, performing optimally by treating your mind and body right through exercise, nutrition, and recovery. And fourth, finishing strong by living a life worth telling a story about. I'm, I'm curious to know with all the feedback you've gotten over the past year, which of the key points seems to have resonated the most with readers and why do you think that is? Hmm. Well, I think the habits part has really resonated deeply because a lot of people have a tough time maintaining great world-class habits. So when you say in quarter one is kickoff, um, I think what's important is most people have a great idea, but they often fail to kick off um, after their dreams are so big to actually take the ball down the field. Well, what's going to help take the ball down the field is once you take, take that action and, and get the ball kicked is the habits that will carry you into uh, a great performance, whatever your performance may be, including your career. So I think the habits part has really been huge people um, wanting more accountability on that. And also um, I'll say the last chapter has live, live a life worth telling a story about what's your story, because the word legacy comes up quite a bit. And I think there's a lot of people, again, in, in reflection time, in soul searching time about what's my life worth? What is my life all about? What's my purpose in life? And to me, chapter one and chapter 10 marry up because chapter one, the kickoff is about your dreams. What do you dream to do? What do you want out of life? And we've got to make sure that our time and our energy is allocated to the things that we want in life. So you've got to organize your time, literally structure. And I share how I structure my time to GSD, get stuff done um, so that I can do what I need to do to ultimately live a life we're telling a story about. Um, so depending on the reader, I think those are some of the key points that have resonated deeply. How about for you personally, if you were to open your book and reread it, I know you're the author, but I think we yeah. often forget the ideas that come from inside of us during this crazy, crazy year, which of the principles outlined in the book have you personally found served you the best during chapter your nine, tap into the whispers, chapter yeah. nine, tap yeah. into the whispers. It was the, it was, by the way, my probably my most difficult chapter to write in the terms of I was sharing more of my faith than I ever have. I've always kept that kind of kind of 
you know, just to myself. And then that one, I, I share, this is who I am, you know, and this is what makes me me. Um, and this is why I show up and this is what I do and why I do it. Um, and believe it or not, another tough chapter for me to write was the one on training, uh, because I was like, how am I going to get everything I know about training into one chapter? It should be a whole book. It could be yeah. a whole book. So to, to consolidate knowledge into that, but tap into the whispers for me, it's, it's, I get emotional because I think it's an important thing for everybody. I don't care who's listening right now, mom, dad, a husband or a wife or a trainer, coach, like every day you got to tap into your emotions and your emotions is your spirit, you know, inspiration. We've talked about this before. Inspiration means in spirit, um, inspiration in spirit. How do you get in spirit? Because when you're in spirit, when you get emotional, that invokes motion. So all of these things um, to me, tapping the whispers is the one that God, if I could keep tapping into the whispers and keep listening and being obedient to what those whispers are saying, I think that's when you align with your purpose deepest and when you could do your best work. Well, and we have to feel most fulfillment. We have to be open to, to hear those whispers too. You can't close yourself off, right? It's hard to do. It's really hard. I think I always say this is, you know, the, the, hard, the hardest exercise to do is silence. The hardest exercise that one could do is silence, like meditation, quiet time, just being still. We, you know, it's not bench press or squats or push ups. And just like I would say, the heaviest weight at the, at the, uh, the gym is the front door. The toughest exercise is silence and probably the most important one, too, because that allows you to really, I talk about yin and yang energy. Yang is powerful. It's like when you walk into that room that day and there's crazy energy and yang, people are like, are you always like that? No, I'm not. No, I'm not always like that. Matter of fact, the only way to, to do that is to create it, to manifest it. How does that happen? It's because you have a routine, you have a discipline to actually get your yin time, your quiet time, whether that be early in the morning, like I like to do, whether it be the afternoon, the evening, but you've got to have this, this balance in life. And um, most people, most of us don't get enough quiet time. And that's something for myself, I struggle with. It's I, I prioritize um, getting it. I, I dedicate time to it. But the more time I spend in silence, um, the deeper I go and, and uh, the more alignment I become with my purpose. Yeah, I want to reflect back on something you said earlier about how during, during this past year, you've felt really purpose driven, but at the same time, you've never felt more tapped out. And maybe that's mm -hmm. because you were not getting you weren't recharging yourself properly. You weren't, you know, getting that quiet time. You were just, your mind was spinning and you were worried, worried, worried all, too much yeah. rather than taking care. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. And I don't know if I'm a good example of this, Sandy, probably not. But a lot of times when I've done my most profound work is when I've been most imbalanced. Meaning this, when I've written books, I almost become manic. I'm like, I'm, I, I, I just become seven days a week fixated on, I'm going to change the world with this book. Going back to the Impact Buy Plan in 2010, I wrote that book in seven weeks, I think it was. And I mean, it was like nonstop um, while I was still training. Um, and I'm not saying that we you should be in balance, but when people say, hey, you know, talk about the word balance, I'm like, I don't know if I believe in balance. I do know this is when you when you do get fixated on something and you feel inspired, it's really important that you do get your mellow yellow time, your quiet time, and you build it into the schedule. Um, for me during the pandemic, I didn't do a good enough job of building in mellow yellow because you couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't I couldn't escape to Sedona, Arizona, or whatever you know whatever trips you wanted to do. Um, so I'd say in that aspect, it was probably the most challenging part for me was actually getting time off. Um, I'd come into my home office here and I would just think and I'd write, I'd journal and I, I was just tapping in. I'd, I was praying more to God, like, how can you use me as a vehicle um, to change the world? Yeah. Mm, good stuff, Todd. Thank you for sharing that. 